Can beat me. All right. Well, that's it. We're live, and we are playing Noblest Game of Sovereign Powers. Um, originally published in 1999, and they finally released the second edition in 2012, I think. And that's what we'll be playing today. Uh, Bradley, I'm going to need your help on this one a whole heck of a lot. Because uh, I've reread and reread and reread this book, I don't know how many times over. And it is one of the most intricate uh, games of creation that I have ever come across. So, yeah, it's um, it's pretty detailed when it comes to character creation. Luckily, the the sheet I made does uh, kind of like streamline some of it because like it'll automatically calculate your character points when you're allotting them and stuff like that. All right, well, oh. that'll make it easy. So, thank you very much for that. Um, the game itself does seem incredibly straightforward. There's no dice. There's uh, no maps. Uh, it is 100% roleplay. So really the job of the job. game master, or in this game's case, the hollyhock god, uh, all we do is facilitate NPCs and give you guys a task, and then the players will just kind of take it from there. Um, which is kind of cool and infinite worlded. Um, but it's the whole creating oh. characters, the chancel, and the imperator. That is the, uh, the, the complicated part of the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard it being compared, or at least when I was reading for it, it's similar to like. Uh, when you play on the playground, make believe kind of thing. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I don't know. You guys want to get started on characters first? Sounds good. Sounds good. Honestly, I think I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Where I'm just following. So. You know what? I know this is live now. Isn't that a thing? Do I have to face slant hall? Uh, <laughs> you can call me Brad. It doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm right out at you, but I'm going to mess up. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I did just straight up call you Bradley earlier, too. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. even check. <laughs> that, that I don't care about. Yeah. I'm assuming it's fine for you guys as well. You guys don't care. For sure. Yeah, I, I am totally good with it. Um, you, you can call me George. You can call me Hey You. You can call me. All right, Hey You. Yeah, I'll respond to it. That's what I tell the donors. <laughs> All right. Um. So, uh, Laura, you can be uh character sheet one. Uh, I I, I hit all the uh, the extra ones, so we don't have a bunch of confusing things. Cool. Uh. So, uh, we have. The obvious things, your what your character name is going to be, your age, of your, uh, your power, gender, your imperator, uh, your state, which is also the same thing as like what your power is going to be. Oh, okay. They named it like three different things for some reason in this book. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and then code, there's uh, a bunch of... Uh, preset codes, or you can. Well, we might be able to pick other. I'm not 100 percent sure how uh, George wants to do that. With when it comes to attributes, um, you'll have uh, a total of 25 points. Uh, each of these here costs three points each, and you can go up to a max of five. Um, do you guys kind of know what each of the attributes do? Um, no, nope, but I can go real fast. So I've got it pulled up in front of me. That way we can go through it in in real time. Just, just the, all of the different names. It was kind of hard for me to keep track of. So I've I've got it right here. Um, but uh, I, Bradley, I know you said that Laura could do character sheet number one. 
Uh, do yeah. you actually maybe want to take point? That way we can see, uh, or she oh, can sure. how to, uh, like what she should be thinking about for hers. Um, sure. Uh, give me one second. He has to hurry and think of a character. <laughs> no, I, I have to pull up my character sheet that I didn't make in this. I made in the PDF version. Oh, see, he's like, he's way ahead of us. Yeah, I, I cheated. I was going, because I wasn't sure, like, what we were doing exactly today. So I, I basically prepped my character. I, I was going to make the friendship character while we were doing character selection and then pick one of my three. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I did like your ideas of uh, of cave and ink. Did you choose the ink one? Yeah, I think I'm going with the ink one. Okay, that'll be really that interesting. That was a to good see one. Works. Does that mean you can control squids? <laughs> I didn't actually think of that. All right. Um. So for uh, this character, I believe. Uh, Heaven would be the most fitting. Uh, so the code of heaven then for uh, zero of our viewers and for Laura. Uh, the code of heaven is beauty is the highest principle. Justice is a form of beauty. Lesser beings should respect their betters. Um, it should also show it right here, but for some reason oh, it's... Hey, in the room. Can you see the whole thing or just a part of it? I, we can only see a part of it. We've got beauty is the, justice is a four, and lesser beings s. Huh. I don't know why it actually cut it off because it was working earlier. But That's oh well. Microsoft Office. Well, no, this this is all on Google. I won't pretend to be a smart man. Can I try to... There we go. I fixed it. That, that was 100%. Nope. I, I ruined it. Okay, I fixed it again. All right. Teamwork. I'll just make it worse and get more <laughs> stuff to fix. And I think that's the trick right there. All right. So uh, aspect is going to be generally what you would talk this is like superman so like this is you're going to be like your literal physical power level mm -hmm. uh so he, he's going to be a uh meta human he's not going to be he's not going to be like super powerful uh and this one's going to be the controversial one for this character his domain which is what is normally what actually gives you uh your control over your estate it's actually going to be zero. You're having a zero as your domain, so you have no power yeah. over ink. Yeah, well, I can do cantrips, basically. But, but he's a temp. He's a what? Which, which, um, so that means he has a level five in realm. Oh. So. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So realm is the mystic power over the chancel, and that's like the shared quote unquote hideout uh, that you powers get. Uh, and so if you're a tempest in the chancel, um, then that that's where you'll be allocating most of your effort and your points. Yeah, and it yeah. also basically. You can control almost any estate while you're in the chancel with Realm. Um, so uh, this character, uh, <clears throat> he doesn't like the fact that he's a domain zero of, uh, he's just a pawn of his domain. Uh, and so he actually hides it. And he just hides in his chancel most of the time. Uh, and see, his Imperator might change that, uh, might demand him leaving the chancel. But currently, he's gotten away with just hiding in the chancel and um, letting uh, his people do most of his work. Wow, okay. And then the spirit is going to be level one. Uh, 
this one is basically the way I thought about this is this controls how many people you have as your anchors. Uh, I don't know the best way to describe this. If you want to go and do that, George. Uh, so spirit um, is the strength of the Imperator, uh, the Imperator's soul shard within you. And yes, it does uh, um, affect the power over that you have of your human anchors, uh, as well as your protection against other nobles' miracles. Uh, so like if two nobles get into a fight, uh, you have better protection. Um, and uh, so a big part of the game is as nobles, as the, the Dominus, you want yeah. to perform these yeah. miracles to help humanity, but you don't want any humanity to know about the miracles. Like, you cannot get caught. That's a big rule. You cannot get caught, and the spirit will, uh, the, the, the spirit attribute will help you disguise your own miracles. So, if no, I'm sorry. Rule, Real fast. So we don't want to get cut. We don't want to get caught by humanity. Right. Humanity should not know about the sovereign powers. But what uh, if I I'm want just, them to know about Bradley? <laughs> uh, just to make sure. Uh, does that include the chancel? The chancel is like our people, right? The the chancel is uh, your realm. So they can know, right? With what? They can know, right? They're fine, like knowing that we're gods or yes, phony gods. In your chancel, they can know, but when we're talking about humans on Earth, hard pass. They they okay. cannot find out about you because if they find out about you, the uh, the excrucians can find you, and that's a problem because uh, excrucians or the anguishers, they are the enemy. Of this game, they are working to destroy all of reality and creation. And even the most powerful uh, power or noblest uh, has a struggle to defeat them. So, you guys coming into contact with any excursions whatsoever is uh, a huge problem, especially at the beginning. Of the game. All right. Sounds good. Um, and so these are our titles, uh, like Metahuma, Metahuman, Pawn, Tempest, and uh, Hearthfire. So if you ever like need a reference like what your titles are, it just automatically tells you. Um, here we have wounds. Uh, the, the permanent wounds are automatically calculated. This is based off how much aspect you have, basically how, how tough are you. Um, and it's so basically for right now, you'll just copy this into the temp uh, HP. So if you take damage, it'll, it'll go over here. Uh, do you want to kind of talk about how damage works or you want to do that later? Uh, that is something that we might have to come up with later because I actually don't plan on you guys taking damage anytime soon. That's still a mechanic that I haven't really worked out because uh, as... Uh, a role-playing game that has no dice and and nothing of that sort. The combat mechanic uh, is something that I am still trying to work on and learn. So that might even be something that we just talk, start talking about as it comes up. Okay, sounds good. So, so. All right, so Mr. Tomo Ward here has two anchors. Anchors are just like the human puppets you have. Um, generally, you have to either love your anchors or hate your anchors. So I have a childhood, childhood adversary here. Uh, and then also uh, Tomo's favorite author. He convinced both of them to uh, swallow his blood or tears. <laughs> um, that's, that's how it happened. Well, it must have been blood because Brad is to cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is 
actually really cool. Uh, I love the names that you've got going for these guys. Can I ask you where Tomo Ward hails from? Uh, uh, the strange place of random name generator. Ah. Uh, I, I don't I actually, I didn't pick a country of origin. I wasn't also sure if we were doing Earth, Earth, or some other like subset of places. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of where we're going to start is Earth, Earth. Um, yeah. So the cool thing about uh, the Noble Eye is that they can travel anywhere on the world, Ash, which is also referred to as the world tree, Yggdrasil. Uh, and they can, they can go pretty much anywhere on it. They can go to any of the worlds that are on the branches. They can be on the branches themselves. Uh, it, it's a very, uh, I don't even know the word for it at the moment. It, it, it's a, it's a vast idea. This game is incredibly high concept, uh, but I don't want to jump right into all of the high concepts. So we are going to start off just here on earth and we're going to take it from there. All right. Yeah. So I don't have a solid place where, uh, Tome Award started. Uh, yeah, I, I just picked random names that sounded cool. Awesome. And then I do right. say you've added the bonds for Tomo? Yes. Uh, so these are things that he cares about. Uh, this is important because uh, things can affect what he cares about. Um, he, he obviously cares about his chancel because, I mean, that's like literally where he has only, <laughs> that's the only place he has power. Uh, his reputation as well, uh, because he cares about the fact that no one knows he has his, uh, no skill in his domain. Uh, uh, as the uh, power of ink, he does have a pretty vast library of books he hasn't written, uh, but he, he, he'll write one eventually. Uh, his uh, familia, which is just the Basically, everyone that is part of the powers that are under the Imperator. And his anchor, he does like the author quite a bit. Uh, so he also has a bond to the, his anchor. He doesn't care about his childhood adversary. Uh, and then he, he cares about his estate, uh, but he's uh, not as attached as other things. Uh, each bond has a point value you have a total of 20 points that you need to give to things. All right. All right. And then. Oh, God, that's way too big. And then your handicaps. Blatancy? You got a blatant character. Yes. Uh, he tries to compensate for the fact that he doesn't have any power in domain. And so he doesn't really do subtle miracles. He will, uh, he, which is going to be a problem when he's out in the real world. However, he also can't really do much when it comes to leaving his chancel because he, he can do some pretty blatant cantrips. All right. And then he's compromised because of his estate, so he'll have virtually no power out in the real world. Yeah, and, and also uh, uh, people could hold it over his head very easily uh, because he'll be embarrassed. He doesn't want people to know the fact that uh, he's a pawn of his estate. Okay. And he will definitely lie <laughs> to hide that fact. Hence the deceit. Yes. All right. Um, and he does have a gift. Okay. Assuming that you approve of it. So this is basically one of the ones that are in the book. Um, there's just a slight modification to it. This is normally a, a hard miracle, which is a minus three uh, to the cost. However, I just changed it to a normal miracle which basically just means I have to use one 
a miracle point rather than two, but it uh, it cost me an extra character point. But you can see I have four character points remaining, and so this will bring me up to the expected four, I believe. Um, um, would you say that a devoted populace uh, spell is common? In the book it says no. It's up to you, George, though. Um, I will have to find it. Just yes. scrolling. I have the book in the PDF version. Uh, the PDF yeah. version yeah. was a nice, cheap $20. $20. Which is a great price, especially when you consider that you can buy the hard copy for like three hundred or four hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like it'll be on page one hundred and twenty-one. Ah, thank you. Devoted populace powers with this gift of realm are exceptionally well served by the people of their chancel. Their subjects celebrate them as revered monarch or a popular hero, whichever is appropriate. The people of that chancel would willingly throw away their lives at the power's service, and only the most extreme inducements would ever cause one of these people to betray them. Uh, no, I'd actually call that one pretty good. All right. Uh, All right. And so um, I, I'm just, so you have to determine if this is like a common thing or not. Uh, by the book, it is no, though. Oh, uh, then no, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's super common. All right. All right. So yeah, we, we see that this does ca cost four. Uh, to, to make your own gifts can be complicated. Uh, you kind of, it just takes a lot of like talking to your uh, HG to see what exactly they're okay with. But uh, this one's from the book, so it's pretty straightforward. It's the only modification is I changed the normal miracle, or it was a hard miracle. So it used to cost three, but I, I basically made it more expensive, but now it only costs one miracle point rather than two. All right, is that the right. only gift that he has? That is, yeah. He, he's out of character points. Okay, so it does take character points. That is, um, that's what we, we got that from. Uh, I'm losing it. Uh, when you distributed the character points into the attributes and you had four left over, that's what gave you this gift, right? Yeah, I spent four character points on the gift. Okay, fantastic. Um, and you do need to decide what uh, bonuses I get for the handicaps. Um, did you want to just go off of what it says in the book? So that is the uh, positive and negative numbers, correct? <clears throat> um, yeah, I think so. Let me get back. Let me get back. To... Yeah, sorry for jumping around a bit. No, no, it's it's all good. I just need to find handicaps. What page are we on for handicaps? Do you know? Um, I'm scrolling to try to find it here. All right. Are you guys on a certain website that you're looking this up? Because I have gone through so many noblest sites uh, that. No, we have a the PDF, PDF version. Oh. I, I emailed Bradley the link to the Dropbox with my PDF in it because um, I wanted Bradley to have all the information possible because Bradley uh, knows what to do with information unlike myself. Uh, it's page 127. 127. Okay. Right as I got there. So... I mean, I think these are all, these are all limitations. limitations. Not, uh, yeah. No, not limitations. Sorry. Um, what is it called? All right. I found where it says blatant. 
And oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this restriction is worth one miracle point whenever it substantially handicaps the character and two miracle points if it gets the power dragged before the locust court. Adjudicator when the restriction comes yeah, up. Restriction. So you uh, well, so whenever you are held back by this handicap, you would just gain miracle points. All right. So whenever I have to do a blatant uh, miracle, and it, that either like I I can't do it because you know I get caught, or I do it anyways, and therefore possibly get caught, I can get a bonus miracle point or two, depending right. on how bad it is. Depending on the severity, uh, then yeah, we can do We can call it as we see it each time. Um, I'm I'm cool with that. All right, and then compromised. Compromise pawn of his estate. Now this is gonna. This is interesting because if you have no power over your estate at all, you might run into this very, very frequently. So, so as you progress the character, uh, would do you plan on putting any uh, ability into? your estate i so maybe so it wasn't going to be a, a like a focus uh but because this guy mostly focuses on trying to like control people to do his work but uh he does like he wants to become an author so he definitely wants to gain um i don't i don't know how leveling up works exactly that i didn't really figure out but assuming it's a possibility to improve as a character, then definitely uh, he should be able to get more in domain. Yeah, so as uh, the game progresses, there, there's no level up system. Leveling up doesn't really exist. There's no experience points here. It's essentially working off of milestone or um, even like, uh, like in D&D, &D, how you get an inspiration point if you pull off a really cool action. Um, you might get character points if you pull off a really cool action, and when you get enough, you can then distribute them as you please. So throughout the game, you will get character points some way, somehow, uh, but there's not really like a set uh, method for doing this. Well, I hope okay. that you guys get inspiration points or character points or even understanding how to make a character. That too. Because yes, please I give me been, all the character points. <laughs> I've just been Googling so much. Like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, okay, sorry. Continue. Continue. Yeah, Laura actually brings up a really good point when she says that because what we're going off of is pretty much just the book. Uh, Bradley, I don't know about you, but when I was trying to research this game, I did it kind of the same way I did for Dungeons and Dragons, where I would hit YouTube or I would Google how to. Yeah. Or I yeah, no, it didn't work for me either. Yeah, we would go out and we would find content of people playing or of people talking about the game or of people who had given like a, a breakdown of how tos, just because uh, like a really big book when you're first reading it can be a little daunting. And whereas there is a whole internet's worth of information on Dungeons and Dragons because it's very mainstream, there is almost nothing available for nobles. And it, it, it makes it kind of difficult, but it also makes it kind of fun just because it feels like brand new territory. So, I mean, other than the book, I have found... I have found maybe three videos on YouTube, and they're very short, like just people talking about the game, nothing involving gameplay or mechanics or anything like that. They're just rating the game. And yeah. even the Noblest subreddit uh, has a number of 25 posts across six years. <laughs> 
which is stupid low. Um, so when 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 I say we don't really know what we're doing, this is new information to us. It's because there there is just the book for us to pull from, and the book is um, dense. Dense. They use a lot of big words and big concepts, and and, and I mean, there's big font. Big font. No. <laughs> big pictures. There's 300 pages of just information. It doesn't give you information on equipment or armor or items or level ups or or even like much abilities the way uh, the player's handbook does for Dungeons and Dragons. It, it's just like the first half is this is the background that you need to know for the game. And then the second half is here's how you create your character, your chancel, your imperator. Go. Yeah. And some of like, even like example gifts and stuff they give, like, I just want to know what a sovereign's gift mastery means. Like that's one of the examples they give. I'm like, I don't know what that is. But it sounded good for this character, but I don't know what it does. <laughs> and y yeah, and there and it doesn't give you like reference books. You know, like in Dungeons and Dragons, it'll be like, okay, this is your equipment, this is your weapon, this is your armor. Go to chapter six, and then you can pick your your equipment weapon armor off of there and you get all the stats there's not really anything like that it's just kind of thrown in at least i feel like yeah and there's a lot of like uh like story elements or like i guess just it, there's a lot of like information about the world in between their descriptions of how to play the game so it's like you're reading an example of a specific power but then if you want to like know any more information like you don't have it really <laughs> yeah it's um it, it it's a it's a it's a lot we're we're going into this half blind um but i i, I feel like we're gonna have a lot of fun and Bradley, thanks to you, we now have uh, what I think is a, an incredibly efficient character sheet for this. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to create this beauty for us. Oh, yeah. It was fun screwing around because, I, like, the whole point is I wanted to do the gift calculation. Like, I wanted to be able to calculate gifts. Uh, not that I think anyone other than me is actually going to be creating a gift today, but I wanted to do it anyways. I think it's really cool. It's almost like uh, having a feat. Like you don't see feats very often in D and D, and you don't see gifts uh, very often in Noblis. I think it's kind of like that. Yeah. But it'll be really yeah. cool to see how your devoted populace uh, changes uh, the the world of the Chancel. I'm pretty excited for that. So yeah, it's uh, I've heard that uh, gifts are described better as like skills uh, rather than like feats. Uh, according to what I googled, anyways. Anyways, um, so you're saying uh, the the fact that he's pretty uh, compromised with his low domain, uh, so people could blackmail him pretty often. Uh, how much do you think that would be worth for miracle points? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one. Um... And that, that does have the potential to go up. But uh, just, I'm going to say one just for now, just because it seems like something he's going to come in, into contact with very regularly. And I don't want to be handing you miracle points and miracle points and miracle points and miracle points and miracle points. Um, yeah, I, so I, I wasn't, so it, I, I, there's a couple of places where it says that most stories take place in your chancel. And so if that was true, I didn't think that would be a problem because, I mean, he would be the Tempest in in the Chancel, and so he'd be able to fake his domain the whole way. 
See, and that is uh, an, another thing. Because uh, uh, the book says most stories will take place in the chancel. But then reading the book, it also states that uh, the nobili will fight to preserve reality. That's what you guys have powers over, is powers that help create, like, make up reality. And you defend those aspects of reality uh, by using uh, your abilities. Um, and then there's the excrucians who fight to destroy reality. Uh, but they aren't ever going to be in your chancel. The way they're going to do things is to um, be like out on earth causing chaos and stuff like that. So I, I do know that we have our hooks, uh, who, which is just another word for anchors. We have our anchors. Uh, but if, let's just say your uh, childhood adversary, Deo, is in New York, and your favorite author, Gala, is in Madagascar, just for the sake of argument, but there's excrucians causing chaos in Orlando, we can't get Deo and Gala to Orlando immediately, but if it's something that you guys wanted to incorporate into your chancel, a chancel may or may not be able to spit you out where you need to go, just depending on how you guys build it. So with that, you guys might not be in the chancel. You guys might be down on earth or you might be on the world tree or you or or, or or things like that so the book says you'd be spending most of your time in the chancel but when i think about it i think about like that that might be the best case scenario okay then i don't know what so that makes me rethink this character quite heavily then no, because it doesn't. Because he won't be able to do much outside the chancel most of the time. He'd be able to use his realm points to like extend wards and stuff like that on him. Uh -huh. But like, then he wouldn't be able to do much. So uh, I, I think I'll go ahead and continue, uh, or I'll finish out this character sheet, uh, and we'll get started on making Laura's character, and then I'll go ahead and go with the caves dude because he can go outside the chancel very easily <laughs> all right and 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 this is only session zero so as we uh talk about how the game might work and how uh different mechanics will react with each other feel free to change toma like so if you if you need to reallocate some of your character points we can do that uh, nothing that you've put in is set in stone yet. Now, the minute we start session one and your Imperator gives you your first task, that's when I'm going to say, all right, you're married to it. Yeah. It just, the, the whole point of this character was it was supposed to be super weak in domain. Uh, that was like the idea I had for this character. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like, mo most of these uh, handicaps won't really make sense if, like, oh, yeah, he's compromised because he's a pawn of his estate, but he's not a pawn of his state estate anymore, so. Gotcha. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll think I'll, I'll go with the cave guy then. Um, what did I name a cave guy? Johnson, I think, right? No, I didn't name it after Portal. So one of the things that the book talks about when it starts giving examples of uh, your estate is it, it'll talk about somebody being like the god of um, the god of wind or the god of time or uh, there, there was even one that was the goddess of Oh, I don't even remember, but it was, it was one of those things where I went, oh, okay, how does that work? Um, and then when I was watching one of the reviews about the game, somebody even 
uh, made the example uh, like the god of doorways. So you could pick pretty much anything as your estate so long as you could justify it being a building block of reality. Uh, and, and I've been so curious about this since I, since you told me, uh, how would, uh, being like the, the, the dominus of ink work? So the way I was thinking of it is, uh, so in the book, one of the examples they gave was, uh, uh, the estate or, or power of books. And so, uh, the way I was thinking of it is ink was a little bit more general. Uh, so I thought it would be slightly better. And so what I was thinking of is like, you'd be able to perform, uh, what, what's the level one, uh, domain thing called, uh, uh, baronet. No, no, sorry. I meant, uh, like the, uh, the, the miracle. Oh, Not, not the ghost one. I have to find it. Radiant? Nope. That's in realm. That's the other thing about a PDF is I, is I can't just like flip back and forth between pages. Oh. I have to scroll yeah. until I find it again. Oh, I, I meant level two miracles, sorry, lesser divinations. So okay. the idea was uh, he was going to be able to, uh, uh, with uh, lesser creations, uh, which he would have to do in his uh, chancel because he wouldn't really have the ability to go all the way to level four uh, miracles without using like all his uh, all his miracle points. But he would be able to create tattoos on any intruders to his chancel and then perform level two miracles for lesser divinations to kind of uh, track where those tattoos are going. And then uh, he would also have the ability to um, create or distort or destroy maps and texts uh, and easily uh, absorb information from books quickly so you'd be able to uh, like if there was something that like intrigue missions or something that needed to be done you'd be able to like just quickly touch a book you wouldn't have to stick around to read it and stuff like that that is awesome i never would have thought of any of that that is fantastic That's really cool. I almost don't even want you to play as your Dominus of Caves now. But at the same time, I also need to ask you, how would your Dominus of Caves work? So, so the Dominus of Caves is... Uh, I, I literally wanted to be able to tunnel around very easily. Uh, he was also... Uh, he... He also had a gift, uh, but it was a uh, shape-shifting gift, which was the ability to shape-shift into a wombat. Uh, so uh, I wanted a large tunneling creature, so the wombat was the largest one that I was <laughs> able to find. Uh, and so I, um, I, I, his domain would be level four, and so he'd be able to create caves at, at a whim whenever he'd want. And so he'd be able to uh, tunnel around and uh, be out of sight of most people. Uh, and a uh, thing that would be good with it is also uh, one of his handicaps is actually unseen. So when it comes to himself he he isn't supposed to be seen so he might be seen as like the wombat or he might be seen as one of his anchors uh but he himself hasn't been seen except by his wife uh in the last 25 years wow quick um question do anchors have to be human 
I I don't know. That's up to George, I think. Yes. That's actually an incredibly good question, and I will look that up. Uh, you gotta love him. Or hate him, I guess. You gotta love it. You gotta love him or you gotta hate him. You have to feel something strong for your anchor. That's the only way you can make that connection. Mm -hmm. Um the book only ever really uses the example as humans, so I think it might only be humans. Okay. But that is on page 51. So let me get to page 51. It's not that big of a deal. I was just struggling to think of another one, and I was like, well, maybe like a a dog. You know, maybe she just really loves her dog. I don't know. So, so I want to go. Uh, so I'm going to leave that character sheet open. Uh, just so I mean, I'm fine playing both. It's just uh, Tomo is going to be a very weak when it comes to leaving the chancel but he also is going to have a more powerful chancel because he i mean he has five realm points which will be five chancel points so well and that's actually an incredibly interesting concept too because what what we then have is almost the equip and i'm just gonna keep i, I i'm just gonna keep equating this to D D because those are terms that i understand is if you're strong in your chancel and weak out in the rest of the universe, and yet we have somebody who has a really high domain, but a pretty low realm, you could have players that balance each other out, almost like the healer, the tank, the support, the attacker, and stuff like that. Oh, uh, that's a good point, actually. So, uh, speaking of my cave dude, something I didn't actually ex uh, express, um, if you wanted to switch to the, the page that is a copy of character sheet template, uh, uh, one of the uh, handicaps that are available is actually a focus. Um, so, one of the handicaps that uh, the caveman was going to have was going to be a focus, which is basically similar to what it is in D and D, where D and D it makes lets you ha have uh, cast spells without reagents. This uh, basically, when you're holding it, it will you spend character points on the focus, and you have to hold it, and but you get extra miracle points for having it. Um, but that means if you lose it. Uh, you obviously you lose those character points and you are weaker in your domain. So, like if you had someone that had a focus, uh, it could make it uh, so someone that is weak, like Tomo in domain, uh, he could use someone else's focus uh, if, like, if it's necessary to do something like that. And in this case, uh, uh, Roman's focus is a lantern just because it's thematic. Because it's thematic? Thematic. It, it, it's, it just matches his character. Oh, gotcha. I just misheard you. My bad. I really like that your guy turns into a wombat. I think that's super awesome as a person who really appreciates wombats. <laughs> All right, I'm just looking over your your character sheet for Roman. So for your Imperator, I was looking it up, and that's I was saying that that is the gods, right? Of which the realm you're from, or something. Is that accurate? He's like the landlord, kind of. Yeah, the landlord. Uh, a good. Do you, so you just made up the name. Was that? Did you just make up the name? Imperator. No, Toen. Oh, yeah, I made up the name. Yep, absolutely, I did. <laughs> oh, you made it up? I did, yeah. 
Oh, okay. So would I have the same one or would I have a different landlord, quote unquote? You would have the same one because I would put you and Bradley in the same familia, which is the same group of noble. Uh, and all that really means is you received your powers from the exact same imperator. Um, okay. And to be an effective team, I would like you guys to have the same power or to have the same imperator. Um, just because not all imperators are friends. Um, imperators kind of work off of their own uh, their own goals almost. So imperators can be devils, imperators can be angels, imperators can be yeah. Im imperators can be all it is is them taking a, a shard of their soul and then placing it in you. Okay. So. All right. So that that's Roman uh, completed. Uh, so he also, since he's, uh, he's he's literally a caveman, uh, he can't use technology. Uh, he hides in the caves, and he has a lantern as a focus. All right. Uh, these um, the bonds, or not the bonds, the code. The code, um, it, it's still cut off. You want me to ruin that real quick so that you can fix it? I can um, ruin it. Uh, more. Watch. Here I go. Ruined. Bradley's rolling his eyes at me right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fix it. Sanctity of his estate, yeah. his chancel, his, his chancel. lantern, his familia, and his and childhood his... sandbox. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it. That is creativity right there. That's really cool. I am a huge fan of both of your characters, your Bradley, character. and I will not be upset at all. Uh, with either one that you choose to play. Um, and then you can also read the abstract. I didn't actually paste the abstract for the other one, but they both also have a short backstory for reference. Oh, cool. It's a simple man who simple took an man. interest in spelunking as a young child as a method to hide himself from the world. He is an ox of a man, but his wits are not as sharp as others. Spending most of his time in the dirt, hygiene is not a word in his vocabulary. To avoid tarnishing his name, he hides himself from the world. The only direct human contact in the last 25 years he has experienced is with his wife, Shay, whom he met in a... Tarzan-esque relationship in one of his caves. Roman does have a Roman son, does. Elhan. Am I saying that right? Elhan. Elhan. But he has never but spoken never... directly to him. He wanted to keep his son safe. However, the slow-witted Roman had Shay feed Elhan his tears, causing his son to become an anchor and undoing any safety that the separation provided. Roman uses his guising, shape-shifting, and his son as his way of interacting with the world. That's cool. I really like that. That's a dude I don't see leaving the chancel. <laughs> He's capable of doing it, though. Yeah, even if he has, like, a really good... He has a four domain. He's got four domain. He, he, he'll he hold his own out in the real world. But it's also, like, this. the chancel is literally... It's his metaphorical dirt that he can hide under and be away from everybody. I like this character. Um, and then uh, I, I posted the abstract for the... Oh, wait. Is this the right one? Oh, whoops. I'm not posting the right one. I 
Tomo right. is a young adult that has always had an interest in writing, especially novelization of the lives of interesting people. However, he himself has always suffered from writer's block. It would take a miracle for him to be able to actually put ink on the page. When gaining his place as a power, despite his estate, that trend continued. Tomo finds himself overcompensating for his lack of control of his own estate by flaunting his abilities as a tempest to ensure that the people of his chancel don't think less of him. He has confined himself to his chancel so far, but his Imperator may have other plans. Oh, I love your characters, man. Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, T Tomo definitely, uh, if we're, like, leaving the chancel, like, right away, he's definitely going to be not really viable to play. <laughs> well, we'll see what But I, I do like, I like both ideas uh, equally, really. No, those are no. fantastic. Uh, I say flip a coin. Uh, let me see if I can find a coin. <laughs> And Laura, do you have any questions about our character creation so far then? I just don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I don't know, I've been trying to, like I said, look things up as we go because I thought I had an understanding of what things were and I was apparently wrong. So I don't know if you can send me that PDF or if I could look at something. Because also the internet really wants me to know that Nobilis is a financial firm and a trucking company. <laughs> and that is the most you can really get other than a few fandom and wiki accounts, but those are few and far between. So. <clears throat> no, Google always yeah. likes to tell me it's a plant. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another good one. Um, so I guess for bonds, that could be a question for me. I know you listed your um states and his like positive anchor are, are bonds basically just things that our characters feel attached to yep yep okay yeah so yeah so um you you were human before you became a power so you've lived so your whole life, right? Whether it be up until you're 21, like Tomo, or up until you're um, 46, like Roman, whatever that number is, you've lived that many years and you remember that many years. You still have that many years experience and memory and emotion uh, within you. So these bonds are just what you hold important to you as a character and so, uh, this will actually be really interesting because laura what did you want to be the goddess of bonds i've been working on my character sheet but it's not very far so she yeah the uh we were talking about this uh last night um oh wow you've uh, you've been filling stuff in a little bit, not very much. Uh, we've been talking about it, and so, like, having uh, being the goddess over bonds, uh, one of the things that we had talked about, um, and Bradley, feel free to agree or disagree, uh, but you know how everything has a relationship with something else in the world, right? So uh, a rock is bonded, has a bond with the earth. Dirt has a bond with the wind. Uh, birds have a bond with the sky and with trees and stuff like that. So she's essentially the goddess over the connections between things as opposed to actual things. I will say yeah, that you took that makes sense. a step. Oh, go ahead, uh, Bradley. Oh yeah, no, it, it did make sense. Like, because like I was thinking like bonds at, s similar to what George was saying. So yeah, th that that makes sense to me. <clears throat> cool. Because I was thinking it more of like um, I, I was just excited that it could be things like glue 
but also relationships <laughs> or attachment. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was funny. But uh, Bradley, could you read my name for me? Adhesive. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Adhesive. Adhesive in its bonds. No, is that am I the only one who thinks it's hilarious? Uh, I, I didn't realize it until you repeated it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, pulling it together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm not very sure. Yeah, get it though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My wife, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> are we both from heaven? That sounds like the start of a bad pickup line. But no, really, are we both from heaven? If you're from heaven. <laughs> so uh, one of Bradley's characters, Tomo, does uh, follow the code of heaven, and then Roman follows the code of light. So mm -hmm. you have all these options. If you would like, I can, we, I can. We can go over all of them for you. Well, it yeah, was just because if you, you have, have to the check same. Your box and see what it says. Sorry. I was just because if we have the same toe and dude, then I thought maybe we had to have the same code, but maybe we don't. Uh, it, the. The code represents your personal moral standpoint. So, oh, so is this a D&D &D, like, type of like chaotic neutral? Kinda? Kinda. Okay. I, whereas that's more of like an alignment. This is like um, almost like a mantra. Oh. So you remember Dragonheart? And Dennis Quaid was a knight of the old code, so he had like that series of sentences that he would rattle off. That was his code. Um, de defends the weak and upholds the. Uh, he, he's a yeah. sword against the wicked. I don't remember it because I, I get what you're saying, though. It's been a long it's time. Been, uh, but it, it's like your own personal set of. It's your own personal <laughs> almost. That's how I'm going to say it. Okay. But, but, uh, All right. Nope, that works. Um, in that case, I was going between light or chaos. Yeah. You I was reading it about. Chaos. You know what? I just like, I, I don't know. Add a little razzle dazzle. Okay. Um, I'm going to choose chaos for right now, but since we haven't finished picking, poof, there you go. Oh, and it, okay, uh -huh. these precepts are the only truths in chaos. Leave nothing more constrained than when you found it. These precepts are false. There is no truth in chaos. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, okay, cool. <clears throat> All right. So uh, I guess when it comes to picking your attributes, uh, mm -hmm. what do you want to be able to do, like, at all times? Like, what do you think your, like, main go-to power is going to be can you give me an example like what was yours i won't copy it but just so i know what to kind of think along the lines of well so tomo he doesn't have any domain so his his default was using realm uh but for like for uh i'm sorry what did i name my cave guy for roman uh he uh like i wanted him to be able to tunnel around tunnel around freely and so for that, I would need to be able to create lesser caves. So that's a level four miracle. So if I didn't want to use miracle points, I would need at least four domain. Um, so if you want to create something like create bonds, um, level four would be the minimum you would need. Uh, okay. If you wanted to, what are the other ones? So if you wanted to like find bonds, like if like determine if someone like has a friendship uh, that you need at least level two. If you wanted to preserve a friendship, that would be level three. Uh, and then level five is if you wanted to destroy friendships or protect uh, whatever you would consider a major uh, divination in bonds I, I i don't know what a good example of that is no no those were the things that i was thinking oh gosh that was redundant those were 
basically my ideas of either like detecting, building, or destroying attachments between um, two beings. Uh They sound like they're expensive gifts, which makes sense to me. So we get a total of, is it 25 that we get to spend on bonds? Um, so no, 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 so bonds, um, bonds, you get 20 points, but that, that's just like what you like. So that's just allotting points to see what you like. Okay. Um, the, the character points are what you use for attributes and each attribute actually costs three. So you can have a max of eight attributes. Okay. And then what, how was our cost for gifts that or, or what we're, we were talking about? But like so, how those things, so those things would be uh, automatic if you have enough domain. So you see, um, actually, if you want to scroll back up, George, I don't, or I don't know where Lord is on the page, um, but if you see uh, the miracle points where it says temp and yeah. perm, um, so you those are like expendable. Um, so you could have a low a lower domain. But uh, if you have a lower domain, you'd have to use those miracle points to do higher level miracles. Um, so, like, what what do you want to say is your like your default? I want to always be able to do this thing. What what is that? Um, I'm gonna say create attachments. Okay, so do that requires at least level four in your domain then. Okay, and how do I get there? All right, so no, in the the level oh. domain, go and just um, type a four. Done. Yep. All cool. right. And so now you still have four more points. Uh, for, or, I mean, if you wanted to put it all in attributes. Um, so how are you thinking you are muscularly wise? Sorry, I just, when you put four into domain, it changed pawn to duchess. And that just made me really happy. Yeah, okay. it, it's automatic by gender. I, I did that. Uh, I feel very <laughs> proud that it does that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. Cool. Um, okay. All right. So um, you said something about being muscular. What did you say, Bradley? Yeah. Like, uh, w- w- how do you see yourself uh, when it comes to like your physique or your your natural ability of like like. Your your not your nor- normal power. So where you are right now you are is an right now. aspect of zero. You mm-hmm. you're you're human. Like your your yeah. physical prowess would not increase whatsoever. You you're <laughs> human, and that's where you would remain. If you were to okay. increase it to one, you would be considered a metahuman and formidable. You would have increased <laughs> physical and mental abilities. If you want to do an to two, you would be comparable would be with the great heroes and villains. That sounds expensive. How much is a one pointer? Three. Cool. I'll be a one person. Yeah, uh, and just just a side note with level two aspect, you are also able to like minorly shape shift when you have level two in aspect. Uh, Whoa, get, I'm number two. Uh, but uh, that that's like, you don't get to choose. It's like you get to blend into your surroundings. So like if you're in Africa, you look like an African. If you're like in Europe, you look like a European kind of thing. What would two take me as? Let's see. Oh, like what would your name Sorry. be? No, sorry. I was trying to edit the um, Discord page and not the actual spreadsheet so I can see how that affects my um, character point distribution. Uh-huh. Can you make it a numero dos, por favor? Numero dos. Si. Ay, ay, ay. Only seven remaining. Seven remaining. And you mm, still have okay. realm and spirit to go. Maybe I don't care. Let's see. It's realm. It for me. Realm is the power that you would have within your chancel with your familia. So if you're a zero, you have no power there whatsoever. You're basically just a person that lives there. Okay. 
And then if you were to increase it to one, uh, which you have, uh, you have the option of going to one or two, uh, you would become radiant and your reign extends mostly to ghosts and traces of and light traces of visions. visions. Okay. And then two, um, you can know anything you about your chancel or its contents with a single thought. So you just kind of know so what's going on in your chancel at all times. And that's spirit? That's realm. Oh, realm. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um. So I'm looking at Bradley's character sheets because that's just what my basing's off of. And I see that he put one and then a five and the one. <clears throat> and let's see, let's see. And then I put the two. Um so so sorry, I thought I understood this. So what's my domain then? Uh your domain is uh your ability uh, your over ability. your powers in the real world. It's how much of your estate you can actually Gotcha. On Earth, outside of your chance. Okay. Okay. And so if I chose one for my citizen, my realm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That would put me at how many? Can I change it? No, because you have it. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I can. That would leave you with enough points to either increase your spirit to one or increase your realm to two. Hmm. Well, what's my spirit? Spirit. The strength of your Imperator's soul shard within you and your effect over human anchors. Your protection against other nobles' miracles and your ability to disguise your own miracles. Right now you're at a zero. Your noble essence has no integrity and you are limited to one anchor. And if you wanted to increase it to one, your presence could be felt and there is some synergy between your human and noble selves. And you understand something of divine souls, you get two anchors. Yeah, so you might have to get rid of Stacy's mom if you want to stay at level zero. Yeah, for a moment, I was like, what is Bradley talking about? <laughs> and then I saw her anchors. <laughs> the second one is Stacy's mom. She had it going on. <laughs> Sorry, I had to step away for one very, very quick second. And I didn't get a chance to say it. But I see you, you, I came back and I heard you guys laughing at Stacy's mom. It's just a filler. It's just a filler. <laughs> Well, if you didn't want to increase your spirit, Stacy's mom would be filler no more. <laughs> okay, so I'd only get one anchor? You'd only get one anchor if you did not increase your spirit at all. And if you chose to do that, you could keep the remaining four points to uh, allocate toward a gift. Or mm -hmm. you could put uh, another uh, level onto one of your attributes. It's just up to you. Cool. Well, yeah. I think and you can also increase your uh, permanent miracle count here. Um, so uh, you can spend a point to increase this like six, uh, and it's one point per increase. Things I did not know. Bradley, I should have just you, had you be the Hollyhock God. I, I don't know if that would be really good because I like. Trying to DM this seems impossible to me. It it might be, but I'm gonna give it a go. Yeah, that's why I was saying in like the text and stuff like uh, this system doesn't seem like it'd be for me. And when I said that, I meant as uh, a holocaust god, or uh, I don't know if I'd be able to like 
like it's so open that like I don't know how to get players to do anything <laughs> to that makes sense. Okay, I think I changed it. And even though I may not fully understand it, I think that's what I'm just going to keep as for now. All right. All right. So, so your aspect. You're now a metahuman, so you're uh, a formidable physical person. Your domain is your still very high. Still... You like that name, Duchess. Yeah. Your realm... I just think that I really want to have, with my powers, the given that it's with attachments, I think I need to be able to do that in the regular realm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I chose that. I swear it wasn't just because of Duchess, though. It's a nice I, I I was just saying... I, that I know you liked the name Duchess, but the the choice is incredibly sound for you to keep that at such a high level. I think it's a good decision. Thank you. And then your realm, you you'll you'll have pretty much all of the uh, the knowledge of your chancel, which is good. And spirit, you can have two anchors so Stacy's mom can stay. Yeah, that's no. all I even change whatever I'm gonna make her. But yeah. Um, one thing with realm as well, uh, that also the realm increases how many points we have when we create the chancel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, so you, all right. Lori, you do have one remaining point, and so you can either use it to get a one-point gift. There's some one-point gifts that are pretty good. Um, you can get a permanent miracle increase, or um, you could spend a point on a second domain if you wanted to do that, but that's complications. I don't know if that's something we want to worry about. I think complications are things I'm avoiding. Hold on, we so can I multi-class in this game? Yes, it's cheaper I, to multiclass. How did I gloss over that? Yeah, you can spend. So if you multiclass, you can spend one point to put another, to get another domain. Uh, and then you can't go over your your main domain, but it just costs one point per uh, domain increase. So she could be Sorry. the goddess of bonds and clocks. Yes. Yeah. But she would only have level one in clocks. Cool. Cool. I mean, that's still really cool. I mean, right? really cool. Yeah, I was going to yeah. make a character with that. Uh, Tomo was originally going to be ink and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Paper. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he was going to have, oh, and colors. That was the other one he was going to have. But then I, you can't have a second domain if you have a domain of zero. So it didn't work for his character. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, let's see. I go, what I would say. Um, just for the sake of simplicity, I would just do a gift. All right. So, down here. Like, you said the sake of uh, uh, simplicity and then said gift. So <laughs> those aren't the same thing, but. Well, what's the most simple thing I could just have this one point on? <laughs> uh, it would probably be increasing one of your miracle points. It would be what? I'm sorry, Bradley? Increasing one of your permanent miracle points. Oh, okay. Cool. I can do that too. Yeah, so um, I want to do a wombat. It's a throwback. It's a throwback. <laughs> I mean, you could do it if you want. That is, it costs <laughs> one point to do that. What's the enemy of the wombat? Uh, the bat wombat. <laughs> I would like to become a bat wombat, please. <clears throat> okay, in that case. So I can just love spend that one point on another level of my attributes. Uh, if one of the the miracle points. So miracle points basically. Okay. So you can go, you can basically cast a level four domain spell for free, but.
But if you want to cast a level five, it would cost a miracle point. If you want to cast level six, it would cost two. Uh, and so basically you could increase your pool of permanent miracle points by one. Okay. Um, I'm not sure which I would do that on. So any mini could you take it next? Uh, yes. Uh, realm. The true, oh, right, true right. method of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. When my knowledge of this game is at this level, it's probably the same thing as just going off of what I know. So. Hey, I'm right there with you. Thank goodness we have Thank Bradley. You. Though I wonder if I could like have domain over wombat if I added that, and then anytime Bradley's character changed into a wombat, does that mean I suddenly have domain over him? Um. <laughs> yes. Yes. So let's let's think about this for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, for now I'll just stick with. Realm, I guess. Yeah, I kind of want to point out that if you did that, it would uh, it would get in the way of number two of your code, which is to leave nothing more constrained than when you found it. <laughs> constraining him if you exerted your domain over his wombat body. <laughs> Are you still, maybe I'm not chaotic. Maybe I'm a little hellish. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Let's look. Hell, corruption is the highest principle. Suffering is a form of corruption, and power justifies itself. Perfect. Yep. I changed it already. That fits. That fits. Well, that's pretty fun. What's dark? <laughs> dark. Humans dark. should destroy themselves individually. Humanity Duh. should destroy itself, except for a few toys. And ugliness to human eyes shows that one is worthy. Um, yeah, it's that. Yeah. Come on, can you like just calm your face? Thank you. He, sorry, he uh, took apart his Thor and Loki's and then like reassembled them. So one was half Thor, half Loki. Oh boy, and just like Toy Story. Yeah. The worst <laughs> oh no. Oh no, um, our kid is Sid. What is. Sorry, I, I never really understood what Aaron was. Respect I have no all idea either. An oath made on the stars is binding. Be up. Piece. Well, that's not my character. Oh, I guess a druid. Okay. <laughs> I like how every time I talked about this, well, it's not really like D&D, but everything relates. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can relate some in some way something to D&D. &D. Uh, somehow. It may be real loose, but it'll relate. But it'll relate. Uh, I'll just stick with chaos. All right. All right. You've still got your still one remaining point. I don't know, but then, and, yeah. but then I feel bad because then Bradley also might do caves, and I'm like, then I'll do earthquakes. And I don't know why <laughs> my mind is working today, but it is. Um, yeah, you know he's on your team. I know! <laughs> hey, he's so dumb! <laughs> I have to stop thinking this way. All right. You know, I'm not going to add another domain because you said that's complicated. I'm not going to add a gift because you said that's complicated. So just throw that point on to my... I mean, we can go over some of the one-point gifts you want. Like, we won't try to worry about creating new gifts. We can just go through some of the examples if you want to look at some of them. Oh, if they have examples that are already made. Yeah, let's do that. Can we do that? Yep. So we have... Do you want to go do that, George? Do you want me to do that? Yeah, I'm trying to find uh, the start 
Um, sample gifts of aspect. All right. Um, so the first one we have here is Durant. Uh, Durant characters uh, Durant. Are, are difficult to injure. Their skin turns aside the blows of daggers wielded by mortal hands. Swords yeah. and chainsaws alike work poorly against them. They heal quickly, and if they survive a blow, however grave it may be, the wound will be a faded scar in seven days' time. Sure, let's do that one. Right. Go team. I think. Are you editing it right now? Good. I am. I am. Am I what? Nothing. What's going on with you? Totally. None. Nothing. None. Nothing. Yeah. Bradley's helping us out. Thanks, Bradley. Man, you went super detailed into this form, didn't you, man? Yeah, I mean, Wait, this, is just, this is, yeah, I built this. This is basically what the character sheet is. I just made the drop downs a possibility, basically. Why are you still at CSL? Because I don't know how this is even, like, a job. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he could just make character sheets in, S in Excel for a living, he'd do it. And he'd be great. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So, ta-da, I made this sheet, guys. Observation of self. That's really cool how that's all in there. Should I? I feel like I'm going to add just like the quick. Quick. Um, injure. Done. Because I will forget I what Durant means. Durant. 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 There is an ordinary world somehow we have to find. It's one of their lyrics. <laughs> I have no idea, but okay, I'll believe you. I was building off of Bradley's joke. <laughs> it fell flat. It would help if I knew any of their songs when I made that reference. I have I have a domain of zero when it comes to my power over jokes in the real world. Hey. It's okay. Tomo shares your company. Huh. All right. So then we should figure out bonds. Yeah, so I was just going to make it so that my character, I don't know if this makes sense, would um, have domain over attachments in kind of like a, um ironic way because as a human, I didn't have any. And so I messed with others and I either try to create them or like I, I live through those attachments. Okay. So... I, I know you said it was like a. I think I saw that Bradley has used one where it was a place. Yep. Um, so I guess I could do. Um, I think my character was mostly outside, kind of nomadic in a way. Oh. Um, so I think I would say maybe, like, like I, I feel like the forest is too vague, but like, I don't know a specific forest I could just name. You can just say like neighborhood <clears throat> forest or something like that. A childhood forest. Cool. 
Uh, what's, what's, that, what's that forest, what's, uh, what? the, the suicide forest in Japan? Oh, God. Yeah, not that the one. Jake Thanks. Paula forest. <laughs> <laughs> The what? The Jake Paul. The Jake. Oh my gosh! Didn't he like Didn't videotape like that forest or something like that? Yeah, I don't it's, know. I, I can't even say that. Okay, O'Hara or something. Like, like if, if he was a forest, that would be the forest that he is. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's what not I, what I meant. But that's sure. definitely what I thought you were saying. <clears throat> and then I can say maybe uh, my neighbor who took me in was one of the few people that I liked. And we'll call her Miss... Jacobs, because that sounds like a real name. And I think that's it. All right. You need a, a lot 20 points in between those. Yep. Cool. 19. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, I'm totally cheating, and I'm just trying to live through your inspiration. Oh, you're attached to your reputation? Well, yeah. <laughs> Tomo so definitely uh, attached to his reputation. Okay. I mean, if I'm going to do the gingerbread man voice, he has to be an annoying brat, so... I can't wait for this I character. For this <laughs> I mean, I flipped I a mean, coin. It was Tomo. So <laughs> I'm playing Tomo. The gingerbread <laughs> voice is one of my favorite voices. Oh, what was the, what was the NPC's name from your Nothing session? Is no <laughs> that was it. He's, he's my favorite character. Like, even in my, uh, like every session, not every session, uh, every campaign, I bring in Lupin because uh, I, I just love doing his voice. It also doesn't hurt, which is a big benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I remember a lot of my voices were real deep and growly, and I'd start coughing halfway through. So I'm trying to veer away from that for this game, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It might just be my default. Yeah, it seems yeah. to be that way too. Like I have, I have other voices that I've like thought about, but then it just a default to gravelly because it's like, okay, well, I don't know what this NPC is sounding like, so it's just gravelly now. Yep. Yep. That's me for That's like ninety nine percent of all NPCs. There, I think I made it. All right. So how are you so messed up? Are you going to be my therapist? Let's get into it. <laughs> I have a toddler and uh, I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. Let's see. Is that under handicaps? Yeah. Whoopsie. Okay. Do you want to read her some examples, George? Yep. I'm uh, yep. scrolling through my vast PDF to find the handicaps page. 130. What I need is just a post it on my computer screen so I can just really quickly yeah. get If you it. go up, up to the top page uh, and then uh, go down to the table of contents, the yep. links are clickable. That's, uh, that's what I did. Okay. Just scrolling all the way up, seeing where I need to go, and scrolling all the way down. All right, so for handicap. Did you say scroll all the way down? You can just click it, is what I meant. You can just click it? 
Yeah, like you can click the the thing after you find where it is, and it'll just take you immediately to it. Oh, hold on. Everything needs to stop right now because I need to. I need to test that. It worked. It would have saved me so much time. All right, uh, handicaps. That's under restrictions, right? It's not even called handicaps in the books. Um, there's limits and then restrictions. There's okay. There's limits and then restrictions. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. found it. In the table of contents, it'll just say gifts and handicaps. But then all of the subchapters, there's nothing that says handicaps. It just says limits and restrictions. Oh. Which... Huh? Oh, yeah, I just said, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So if you're like me and you're looking for the, the, the single word handicap and you can't, you know, you know do the... the, the you can't, oh, I'm so stupid. You can't draw the connection between the two. <laughs> then you just end up blathering like an idiot. Like you find it. Anyway, limits. <laughs> um, Are you dead? Uh, the, fir the first limit is dead. <laughs> You're Dead. Would that make it harder to play? <laughs> Just a little bit, I think. Yeah. I would do that, but, you know, I'm dead. A it gives three points, it. though. It gives you three <laughs> points. Uh, a PC with this limit is dead or otherwise bodiless and can only act anchor. through their anchors. They can create new anchors using an established anchor's blood or tears. And if they lose all of their anchors, they simply fade away. Uh, so unless oh, this PC this... has... Was that Echo or was, that... was Bradley trying to talk to me? Hmm? Uh, that was just Echo. It was Echo. Bummer. Sorry. Unless this PC has a spirit of five, they must pay an additional miracle point for each aspect miracle. So you could be dead. You could be dead. I'm going to pass on that one. Thanks. Yep, you got it. Yep. Um, disabled. Okay. Uh, this character is disabled in some way. They could be blind or lame, one-handed or psychotic. They suffer from a major physical or mental disadvantage that limits their aspect-based abilities. Players can be creative about what this dis disability is. A noticeable limitation, like anosmia. Anos 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 I do not know um, what that is. It's worth I think a point. It's, anosmia, I think, is where you can't smell. Oh, okay. No. You get a point just for not having smell. That's. I'd take that trade. And a major what disability, if have, like blindness. Have like this. Go ahead. Sorry, could I have like split personality disorder? Why? And so one personality has domain of one thing, <laughs> the other personality <laughs> is. <laughs> you're you're gonna be twice from My Hero Academia. <laughs> Acrophobia, alcoholism, uh, alcoholism. Those would best be purchased as restrictions. How are you feeling about being disabled? No? I think I'm pro. I, at least the smell. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you want to you so wanna have an insomnia? Anosmia? Sure, because that's literally yeah. all it is, is not being able to smell. And this isn't a trick where it's like, ha ha, you actually just sleepwalk the entire game and have no control. <laughs> no, it's not insomnia. 
<laughs> see. Hmm. It will be a yeah. So that's technically a permanent because it's a limit, but it's up to you if you would rather it just be a temp restriction, and then whenever she can't smell anything and it actually has a effect, you can give her a point. No, we'll just give her points. No. Okay. I don't know how to play this game I'm... yet. <laughs> okay. All right, and then right. we can keep going. Wrong mouse. Wrong. Uh, uh, focus, focus, which is one of which, which, um, Bradley's, I think. Oh, it's for yeah. Roman, not for uh, Tomo. Uh, uh, Roman uh, had a focus, which... Bitch. You want me to go ahead and just describe that real fast? Yeah, please do. So basically, instead of spending character points on yourself to increase your domain or like increase your realm or increase whatever uh, attribute you have, you can increase it on a focus. Um, and so you can give that focus to other people or they can steal it. Um, and then you lose that attribute while you don't have it or don't have it in your hands. Um, and the benefit is you get... Uh, um, a miracle point for every uh, attribute you like a lot to this focus. So, for example, sure. for Roman, he had two of his domain, which he normally has four domain. Uh, he allotted two of it to his focus. So, if someone stole his lantern, he'd only actually have two domain, but he'd also give it to another uh, one of his familia to make them stronger. And the limit is uh, when it comes to giving other people your focus or someone else using your focus is they can't go over your ability if you were to have the focus. So, for example, if you gave Tomo your uh, your focus uh, and you put like two domain on it, he would get two domain. But if you instead had a focus for your realm, which also is two, uh, uh, if you gave it to Tomo, it wouldn't do anything for him because he's already stronger than you in Realm, so it wouldn't do anything for him. Does that make sense, kind of? Can I just look at it? Yeah, you can look at it. <laughs> she She came across <laughs> the house. Like, I just can't see. So, oh, dang, wrong mouse. This is what I get for using two different computers. So this is focus. It starts down here. Okay. Okay. Um, say hi to the stream. Oh. Hi. Okay. Um, uh, it's a very common limit. Okay. So what you would do is, so it's like a wand, right? So if you wanted a wand, you would take uh this up here, like your domain. Mm -hmm. You, you could take a portion of those levels and attune it to your wand. So as long as you had your wand, you would still get your full four in domain. And then if for whatever reason your wand was stolen or lost or broke, you would lose those two levels. But because it's now attached to a physical item, you could pass your wand to somebody else who might need it, mm -hmm. and then they would gain that benefit as well. How'd I do, Bradley? Yeah. yeah. Uh, equating it to a wand works a lot better than just a focus. I know what a focus is in D&D, so I immediately think of that. So, um, Roman's focus is a lantern. If we were playing D&D, it might be like a wizard's crystal ball or, um, like a like a just like a crystal that they keep on their staff, maybe. Okay, so it's just basically you put a power of some sort into this item, and then whoever's using it accesses that power. Wow. 
Alright, I'll leave again. I brought hey, small things. The small things follow the wife. Okay. Okay, well, this is so much easier to just see it than hearing about it. I'll send you this PDF as Woo! well. Woo! Yay, do that. Yeah. That way you know what kind of confusion Bradley and I are reading. I like the idea of being hated. Tomo doesn't. Tomo doesn't, but it's it's the opposite where uh, powers in their realm are not well loved. And seeds of sedition and perfidy are sown throughout their chancel. Armed rebellion is unlikely, uh, particularly if there are other PCs who have not chosen this disadvantage. But a vicious mind can conceive many subtler means by which to destroy even a sovereign. So it just means, like, when you're in your chancel, people just do not like you. You are a bad, bad noble. I like to imagine there's like a fan club for Tomo and then just a, the opposite, like a, a hate club for, uh, wait, wait, what's the world's characters? Oh yeah, adhesive? Adhesive. I'm sorry, adhesive, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. Sorry about that. Hi, adhesive. Hi. Is that the voice for adhesive? No. <laughs> I'm just I create a bond. Do they feel attached? Okay. Um. Okay, we're on all the things that are wrong with me. Um, the focused thing sounds cool. Can we do the focused? The focus. How much? What, what would you like to be your focus? Yeah, I'm trying to think about what would make sense for this character. Um, could I do a, let's just make it a book. Can I do that? What kind of book? Just like a small fictional book. Oh, okay. Like, like George Can R. we make it an Ikea? Like J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Stephen can you make it like make it an Ikea manual because there's a lot of attachments there <laughs> oh that's funny do it do it do it that is good, that is good. Ikea manual yeah. or instructions <laughs> How did you have this wrong one? How many points did you have uh, attuned so, to your lantern for Roman? Roman had two, but it's up to her how many she wants to attune. Basically, how weak do you want to be if this uh, manual was stolen from you? Or I, if Tomo had it? Well, I would be okay if Tomo had more access to my powers, but just in case somebody who shouldn't have it somehow ends up with it, oh. that would be unfortunate. So I think just, I get uh, like sorry, just to clarify, they get uh they improve their own domain, not your domain. Okay. Well, it would be okay if Tomo had it still, because we're supposed to be on the same team. Because I'm not gonna have domain over wombats or earthquakes. <laughs> Um, so I would say oh, two sounds a great number. It's Bradley. All right, two it is. Why is that so big? For it, it's it's because this column uh, originally had a, a bigger text. I just had to change it back. Gotcha. Do you want more handicaps? Um, I 
I want to say yes, but I don't know if you um if I have the sheet yet. So we can put a pause on it if you want to. If we have the sheet yet, I'm sorry. What? Right. I think you said you're emailing me the PDF. Oh. Was I wrong? Yeah, I can do that now. Yeah. And then I'll just go through it real fast. Oh, there is no real fast about this PDF. Oh, there is if I go, and you look good, and you look good, and you look good. We're done. <laughs> yes, this is a good handicap. I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> that was a I, lot of points. I don't picture <laughs> it going that quickly for you. Me neither. But yeah. Do you know which are you sending it to the one that I just made? Yeah. Cool, cool. I almost said it. Not that it matters, but I almost said it. <laughs> um <clears throat> Is being like manipulative a handicap or is that just a personality trait that's annoying? Like deceitful? Sure. Yeah, deceitful. Yeah. I mean, it is a like a restriction, but it, okay. it's like very rare that you get points. It's only like if it causes problems that you get points. Oh, we get points for causing problems. It, basically, if these handicaps cause you problems, that's when you get points. Is oh, cause us problems. That's way less fun. Yeah, <laughs> when you have the problems, not someone else has the problems. I was like, we can inflict the problems and get the points. New favorite game ever. Okay. Hey, I'm going to email it to you later. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I want to just leave it as is and I'll fix it later because I don't want to spend all this time with me having you read things. And I go, no, yeah, no, yeah. We, yeah, we can go over it uh, in our downtime, and then we can kind of reconvene. We're definitely not going to finish session zero tonight, because we still need to build the chancel and create the imperator. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, let me know if you get it. I'm sending it now. Okay. So other than that, um, let's see. You've got your gift. We have no more character points. Other than that, it looks like you really just need to uh, give yourself an abstract or a backstory. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I think I would be kind of a nerdy kid in school, has a crush on a on a fellow student who's in the newspaper club. We go on an outing one day oh, to hmm. see writers, I'm and there's wondering this what this is about. <laughs> Just kidding. This is about. <laughs> is this a movie reference? I think it's like three separate trilogies. Right, Spider Man, and then the other Spider Man, and then they have the other Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't aware Peter Parker was in the newspaper club. Well, I mean, he wasn't, but wasn't like MJ. Um, actually, you know what? I Not in Peter, this. Peter was the photographer for the newspaper, the school paper. Oh, okay. I must have so, my references here. Anyways, you guys got the idea. Yeah. You picked up what I put down. Even if it was wrong. Okay. <laughs> Comics change all Comics. the time. Yep, 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 yep. Wow, so many Spider-Man movies and so many Batman movies. So, let's see. So, we're gonna create a chamless. A chancel. Even? Yeah. Chancel. So, uh, we can keep working on adhesive uh, over the next week or so, just kind of off and on. Um, yeah. But for two characters, it's taken us almost two hours. We do have <laughs> a 
a child to put down. And uh, I don't know about you, Laura, but I am hungry. <laughs> Um, so we might be saving, we're going to save Chancel and Imperator for Session Zero Part D. Well, cool. Which means Bradley will have to come back and play with us again. Oh, no. <laughs> Bradley, I thought do you I was play just creating a character. Come on, guys. <laughs> I don't know about actually playing. Oh. Well, speaking of actually playing, one, Bradley, have you found a fun group to play D and D with over yonder where you are now? Uh, not like in like. So I checked a few comic uh, bookstores and stuff like that. COVID kind of killed the D and D scene from what I found. Um, but I did start a uh, an online thing with some Europeans on Mondays. <laughs> oh, nice! Cool, cool. Because I understand D&D &D more than this. And so I didn't know if George was thinking about potentially ever doing a D&D &D group. Not necessarily to DM, but I don't know. Maybe something we could talk about later in the future. This is one project, but maybe if we need a... I don't know. Yeah, well, definitely. It just... I, I know... I don't know what your guys' available, availability is going to be like on Sundays and Mondays. I wasn't sure if you guys were available on either of those days, which are currently my days off. Oh, nice. I well, beans. definitely would like to play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't mind DMing more. Um, we Laura and I have started going to a local game shop for uh, to be players. Um, yeah, but I I do miss Dungeons and Dragons uh, pretty badly. So uh, honestly, this th this has just kind of shown that we definitely can somehow make uh, a. Di a an online game work. Uh, we would just need to find a way to work out like maps and uh, visual oh, yeah. damage and stuff like that. And D&D &D Beyond might be pretty helpful. Um, uh, well, I have a Roll20 Pro account, so oh, okay. that won't be a problem. I, I'm used to using that. So like, if, if I'm DMing, it, it would be super easy for me to do that because uh, right now I've been doing uh, Lost Minds of Pandora. I know you guys have already played it, so that's why... Obviously, I didn't like invite you guys, uh, but the modules on Roll Twenty are pretty easy to like run. You just have to learn how Roll Twenty works. Mm. Okay, and that takes a while, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Um, we're gonna go ahead and end our stream there. Then, and we will see about picking it up next week hopefully if we can all get together uh depending on work schedules primarily my work schedule um but then we'll pick it up and we'll create our chancel our imperator and with any luck we will start playing thanks guys all right, all right. Oh.